Isaiah 10. And I want you to watch this in verse uh, 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden, the devil's burden, shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. You see that? It shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Now, you know, you've heard me talk about this a lot. When you were conceived, uh, there was a spark of electricity that happened when conception took place. That was God visiting your baby shower. Some of you have heard me say that a lot of times. And he brought gifts to you. He visited you at your conception, and he brought gifts. Hallelujah. Gifts. Yeah, some of them have never even been opened. People have just never even opened these precious gifts that were brought at their conception. And it's because religion will never show you where the pool is to open the bow that opens the gifts. Religion will never show you where that's at. But God wants you to know where that's at. Because these gifts are anointings. They're anointings to do things. They're anointing. They're the power of God on you and in you to do things. There's all kinds of anointings. There's all kinds on every person. Now, have you ever noticed, and see, when people are, when they're operating in their anointings, see, when they begin to operate in their anointings, the devil trembles. He, he begins to get very afraid. And we'll get into that in just a minute. But, but what happens is, is when you begin to operate in your anointings, See, you're, you're doing something that you may not even realize is going on. Have you ever noticed that when depression or fear comes, the, one of the first things it does is to try to get you to stop using your anointing. If you're a singer, the first thing he wants you to do is you'll say, I don't feel like singing. I, I just don't feel like singing. Or playing, if you're a musician, you play, I don't feel like playing. Whatever it is that you are doing, that you're anointed to do. I'm just saying music because of this. But whatever you're anointing to do, the first thing when depression comes upon you and the enemy brings this on you, the devil comes at you with that, the first thing he does is try to get you to stop using your anointing. Because it's the anointing that removes the burdens. And because of the anointing, yokes are destroyed. What does that mean? It means that the anointing God smeared in, rubbed on you, dripping on you so fat to the place that the yoke the enemy tries to place on your neck, it just slips off your neck and falls to the ground, and the ground rots it on the spot. So he's trying his best to get you to quit using your anointing so that he can yoke you and burden you. Now you need to remember that. Keep that in your mind. It's a strategic war, and he is fighting you this way. See, it's the only thing that will move, remove this burden. That means a load. Now, a burden is not only a load, but it also tries to make you burdensome, and everything burdensome. Your anointing is to lift and remove burdens from yourself and others. Your anointing is so powerful more than you know. Now, I want to show you something that the devil knows how powerful the anointing is. Now, he knew how powerful it was in the beginning. He knew how powerful it was in just a cherub because the scripture says that he was the anointed cherub. Now, think about this. He was the anointed cherub before Adam was ever created. And in the world before Adam, God was preparing the earth for his family to come. And there was one cherub that was anointed. He sat on the holy mountain of God. And his anointing operated this way. He would lift himself up to the center of the earth. 
And he would find revelation in the stones of fire. There's a scripture in Ezekiel that talks about the stones of fire. And he would walk up and down in the stones of fire. These are stones like Isaiah was talking about where he took a stone, a coal from the altar and touched his lips. These are revelations in, in, the, in the mind of God. And he would walk up and down in those stones of fire and he would find a revelation and he would pick this revelation up with that anointing. He would lift himself up to the center of the earth and begin to sing the anointing, sing the revelation with that anointing. And the, and the Bible said his, his shofars, his pipes was built into his being and they would begin to play the, the corresponding music and the frequencies that he would carry his words around the world. And it would hit the top canopy of the crystalline and go all the way around the earth in those days. And everything would begin to respond to the, to the word of God. And the anointing carried such a thing. And so he knows what it will do. And he fears it. Because he lost that anointing. And you operate in it. Now he knows what it would do with a cherub. Imagine what he knows it will do with the image of God. Operating in someone who's born again. Operating in someone who's in the very image and the very likeness of God. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to look at Job uh, 38 and verse 4. We'll look at Job 38 and verse 4. Let's put that up on the screen. I hope everybody's staying with me today. Are you with me? Just say, I'm with you. I heard somebody behind me. Austin said, yes, sir, I'm with you. All right. Job 38 and verse 4. I'm going to wait till it's on the screen for you to see it with me. Hallelujah. Yes. It says, where was thou, the Lord talking here, when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Now just come on down. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest, or who hath stretched the line upon it? He's talking about when he created the earth. Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Look at this verse right here. When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. When God was creating and laying the foundations of the earth, it was so magnificent when he took the picture in him and released it out of his mouth with the anointing. And it came out of his mouth and came across. It was so overwhelming to those angels. That's what it's referring to here, the sons of God. It was so overwhelming to them that all they could do was just shout. He saw what that anointing would do. And he knows what it will do. And so when God came to you at your conception, he deposited these things in your spirit, waiting for the day when the light, the glorious light of Jesus Christ coming into your heart would suddenly awaken those anointings on the inside of you. And the enemy's scared of those things. He knows what it would do on a cherub, and he knows what it will do coming out of the mouth of God, carrying on the anointing to lay the whole foundations of the earth. And he knows if you ever begin to operate in your anointing, and you start operating in those gifts, which are anointings, and you begin to operate in those gifts, then burdens start lifting off of you and lifting off those around you. Yokes begin to slide off because of the fatness of the presence of God. And it la lands on the ground and the ground begins to rot it. So the burdens are removed and, and the yokes are destroyed because of the anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So all these angelic beings watched as they saw what the anointing would do. And it was so powerful that they, all they could do was just shout. Now, I want you to think about this. There's only a few times in the Scripture that it's recorded that angels shout. I mean, imagine what would make an angel shout. That did. That made them all shout. 
But there is coming a time when the Bible said the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. And it says at that moment the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the air and to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So when you start operating in your anointing, then you create an atmosphere. God has positioned you so that it starts to create an atmosphere around you for the Lord himself to shout into your situation. Amen. It creates an atmosphere for the Lord to shout and for angels to go to work in the whole situation around you. It's when that anointing starts coming out. David would play with an anointing in front of the demon-possessed Saul. And he would play with the anointing and demons would run from Saul when that anointing would show up. You know why? Because they, at any moment they could hear the shout. They could hear it. But it's not just the shout of the Lord and it's not just the angelic host moving. When your anointing starts being used and you bring it on the scene, it not only creates that atmosphere, but it creates an atmosphere for raising the dead, for resurrection power so when you start using your anointing then you create the atmosphere for the lord to shout for the angels to shout for the for the sound and the frequencies that you, of your anointings create this atmosphere of resurrection power and what you thought was lost in your life suddenly comes up out of the ground and comes back to life and it brings resurrection power on the scene no wonder the enemy wants you to stop using your anointing. Why don't you just say right now, wherever you are, I refuse to stop using my anointing. Some of you, he's, he's absolutely trapped you. And when you get into a trap where you say, well, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do the other. What you need to do now is begin to use your anointing. If you, if you play an instrument, pick that instrument up and start playing it. And start praising God with the sounds you're making. And you will create an atmosphere for walls like Jericho to collapse. You create an atmosphere for angels to move for you and for resurrection power to come into your life hallelujah 